Hi and welcome to our seven day challenge. I'm Emma and today is day one. So I thought that as it is day one, we'd start lying on our back and let's try and find our roots. So coming down into the corpse pose, just resting feet apart from one another, about hip distance, shoulders down away from the ears, palms of the hands, turns face to ceiling, just a couple of inches away from the sides of the body. And then let's all of us take a deep breath in through the nose and out through the mouth. And then from there, let's just stay with our breath. Those of you familiar with Ujjayi breath, coming immediately to Ujjayi breath. Those of you not so familiar with Ujjayi breath, we're going to be breathing in and out through the nose if we can. And if you can, you might try and direct the breath more so towards the back of your throat, constricting your glottis in the process and creating an audible sound to the breath. They liken the sound of the breath a little bit, dare I say, to the sound of Darth Vader or to the seashore. But if that's kind of lost on you, don't worry about it. Just breathing in and out through the nose is more than enough. So as we breathe in, just really expanding into the ribcage particularly, expanding ribcage outwards and lifting upwards. And then just a full release on the exhalation, completely releasing all breath from body. So on the inhalation, expanding particularly into the ribcage, ribcage expanding outwards and lifting upwards. And on your exhalation, just completely releasing breath from body. So just taking a few conscious rounds of breath. Now we're going to start linking breath with movement. If anything doesn't feel right for anyone at any point, then please feel that you can stop and rest and adjust the postures as well for your body. Okay, so let's begin by just taking an inhalation to draw the right knee in towards the chest. So we're going to hold on to the back of the right thigh or the right shin, just avoiding the knee joint as we root down through the back of the left leg. So beginning to really awaken into the back of the body there, down through the back of the left leg as you also maybe start to feel some sensation in that right hip. So keeping the breath steady, starting to open and lengthen into the body. And then we'll release on an exhalation, right leg along the mat. And instead, let's inhale the left knee in towards the chest. So hugging that left knee in. Again, just holding the shin or the back of the thigh, just avoiding the knee joint if you can. And let's root down into the back of that right leg, flexing the foot. And you do the same with the left foot. So dorsiflexing, the opposite of pointing. Brilliant, and then let's take an inhalation to draw the right knee in to join the left knee, so both knees in towards the chest. And then let's just massage the lower back. So you might imagine you've got like a 10 pence piece at the base of your spine there, and you're just trying to massage around that 10 pence piece in one direction, and then in the opposite direction. And then just come back to the starting position, and we'll just release that left foot back down onto the mat, so the left foot's flat. If you happen to have like a, a scarf or a belt or a strap or something like that near to you or you can get one, then take it around the sole of the right foot and on an exhalation we might extend up through that right heel. You can also just hold the back of the right leg with your hands, maybe the back of the thigh or the back of the calf. Some of you probably can hold the foot as well, so wherever feels comfortable, just lengthening into the back of that right leg, pressing the left foot down onto the floor be starting to feel where you might be holding some tension in the body. Okay, and then on the exhalation, let's release the right foot down onto the mat and we'll inhale the left foot up instead. And again, you might take the strap around the sole of the left foot or hold the back of the left thigh or calf or the foot itself. Just make sure you're maintaining a length through the back of the neck and shoulders are softening away from the ears. Just being mindful to really hug that left thigh muscle to the thigh bone and breathe into any sensation you're feeling. So we also start to notice that one side may be slightly more challenged then, shall we say, than the other. Okay, and then again on an exhalation we'll release this time the left foot down onto the mat. And then let's inhale both knees back in towards the chest and we'll cross the ankles. If you can reach your feet, do. If you can only reach your shins, do that. Either roll to the right side and push yourself up, or rock backwards and forwards and bring yourself all the way up from there. 
and I'll spin round to face you. So we're just going to sit tall for a moment. So sitting tall on the sitting bones, legs stretched out ahead of you. I'm just going to rotate the ankles in one or the feet then to rotate into the ankle joints in one direction. And then in the opposite direction, you might feel some clicking as well, possibly. And again, one of your feet or ankles, I should say, might feel more open than the other. Okay, come back to the starting position. And then we'll just dorsiflex and point through the feet. So dorsiflex and point, so dorsiflex toes to face, and then pointing toes away from face. Just doing that a few times. Brilliant, and then we'll go out to the side as well. So back to the starting position, we'll take an inhalation here and then we'll exhale, little toes down towards the mat, inhaling to the center, and then exhale in towards one another. That's it, inhaling to center, Exhaling out to the side, inhaling, and then exhaling all the way there. Good, coming all the way back to the starting position. Special yogi toes, let's just extend through all the toes by your big toes and draw your big toes towards your face. Yeah, it gets, the, gets you thinking this one. And then big toes away from you are the toes towards you, or at least it challenges that mind-body connection. The mind wants you to do something that the body can't always do. So big toes towards you, other toes away from you. Sometimes you actually have to go and touch them. Big toes away from you, other toes towards you. Sometimes you get cramp as well. It's wonderful. And then just wiggle out the toes from there. Good, so really helping to establish our foundation, rooting down now. Let's still continue to work with the feet. Let's come on to our knees and let's tuck the toes under. So if knees are about hip distance, feet about hip distance, and just settle. If you can, the sitting bones on the heels with the toes tucked under. It's not necessarily the uh, most pleasant of sensations. And interlock the fingers from here and we'll take an inhalation, extend the hands towards the ceiling. And then exhale, release the hands together at the back of the body. You're going to inhale, lift the hands from here. And exhale, release down. By which time probably your toes are starting to make themselves known to you. So from here we'll come up off the toes, hands on the mat, we'll bring the feet flat to the mat. This time big toes towards one another, heels towards one another as you now settle into a kneeling position and possibly lift the knees away from the mat. That feels like you're about to break your feet or your ankles and obviously don't do it. But if it's okay for you to do, just opening into the front of the ankle bones there, top of feet, maybe resting your hands on the tops of your thighs. Just keeping the breath steady, the shoulders down, try not to grip through the jaw. So everything softening on the out breath. And then we will release down on an out breath and come onto hands and knees and just gently release through the feet. So gently. It's one of those things we want to start, you know, we want to stop. Okay, but we do need to stop. So stopping from there, your feet are probably vibrating now, really awakened into them. Just make sure you've got space on your mat now to come into a kneeling position with the tummy over the thighs, however, and extend the hands forward from there. So hands about shoulder distance apart from one another, fingers spread. So you've got a good foundation now into your hands as well. From here, we're going to come up onto the knees. We're going to tuck the toes under. Toes are about, or feet are about hip distance. You're going to take an inhalation, lift the knees away from the mat. Keep the knees bent and the heels lifted initially. As you lengthen through your arms, lifting through your sitting bones, and so lengthening through the waist, so thumb and index finger pressing onto the mat, drawing the shoulder blades apart from one another, lengthening through your spine, lifting through your hip creases. And then when you feel you've got as much length as possible through the spine, then we'll work towards straightening the legs. But please don't worry if it doesn't feel right for you to try and straighten the legs. Maybe you need to have the knees bent. You might also just walk on the spot to release through the back of one leg and the back of the other before coming into the pose statically when it feels right to do so. And like I say, sometimes it will take lifetimes for these heels to make contact with the mat. It's more important that you have length through the spine. We're gonna take an inhalation from here, look forward, and on the exhalation, step your feet behind your hands so your feet come about shoulder distance apart, therefore. Just turn the heels out and the big toes in. Soften into the knees, hands to the opposite elbows, and just encourage a lengthening again through the back body, but also the feet pressing onto the floor. So ball of big toe, little toe, inner heel and outer heel. And then if it feels okay to straighten the legs, then feel that you can, but otherwise knees bent. Anyone that finds this uncomfortable on their backs, hands to your thighs, extend the crown of the head forward as I'm demonstrating. Okay, those of you with hands in the opposite elbows, just change so that whichever hand is on top, you take it underneath. 
And again, breathing, just noticing weight distribution through the soles of the feet, connecting you to the earth here. And then bringing ourselves up to stand from here. So let's soften into the knees. On the basis you've got room beside you, on an inhalation, reach the hands out to the side of the mat and lift the energy from the earth all the way up towards the ceiling above the crown of the head. And then exhale, bring that energy to heart. Good, releasing the hands down. Let's bring the feet together now. We'll run through a few sun salutations here. So hands to the heart. We'll take an inhalation, hands out towards the sides of the mat, lifting to touch. And exhale, swan diving, fingertips to make contact with the mat, so bend the knees if you need to. On an inhalation, lift the head and chest and step your right foot back into a lunge position. And then exhaling downward facing dog. From here, let's inhale up onto the toes. And exhale, knees, chest, chin onto the mat, elbows in. Inhale, slide through into baby cobra. And exhaling, downward facing dog. We'll take an inhalation, lift the right foot, look forward. And exhale that right foot to the right thumb. On the inhalation, come onto your fingertips, lift your chest. And exhaling, hop the left foot to the right foot, crown of head towards the floor. Soften the knees and on an inhalation, reach the hands out towards the sides of the mat, lifting up towards the ceiling. And exhale, swan diving, fingertips to touch the earth. This time as you inhale, lift the head and chest and your left foot steps back. Exhaling, downward facing dog. Inhaling, the heels lift up. Exhaling, knees, chest, chin on the mat, elbows in if you can. Inhale, slide through into baby cobra, so elbows in, shoulders down. And exhaling, downward facing dog. Inhaling, the left foot lifts this time. And exhale, your left foot to your left thumb. Come up onto your fingertips, inhaling, lift the chest, right leg straight, and exhaling, right foot to left foot, head towards the floor. Soften the knees, and on an inhalation, reach the hands towards the ceiling, lengthening. And exhale, folding again, fingertips to make contact with the earth. Inhaling, head and chest, lift as the right foot steps back, lunge position, and exhaling, downward facing dog. This time let's inhale forward into plank pose, lifting the chest and exhaling knees, chest, chin onto the mat, elbows in. Inhale, slide through into baby cobra, so 10 toenails on the mat. Exhaling, downward facing dog. Inhaling the right foot lifts, look forward and exhale the right foot to the right thumb. On the inhalation, lift the head and chest, right knee above right ankle. And as you exhale, working towards straightening that right leg. Inhaling, the right knee bends as the chest lifts, left leg is straight. Exhale, straightening into that right leg. Inhale, bend the knee again, lifting the chest. And this time as you exhale, hop the left foot towards the right foot, crown of head towards the floor. Soften the knees and on an inhalation, reach the hands all the way up towards the ceiling. And exhale, last one, folding fingertips to contact with the earth. Inhale, the head and chest lifts and the left foot steps back. And exhaling, downward facing dog. Inhaling, come forward into your plank position again. And exhale, possibly this time, lower the whole body down onto the floor. On the inhalation, take baby cobra, elbows in, shoulders down. And exhaling, downward facing dog. Inhaling, we'll lift the left foot, look forward. And exhale that left foot to the left thumb. We'll take an inhalation, come onto the fingertips, lift the chest. And exhaling, straightening into that left leg as best as you can. Inhaling, bend the knee, keep that right knee lifted, however chest lifted. Exhaling, straightening into that left leg, forehead down to shin. Inhaling, bending the left knee on top of the left ankle. And exhale, hop the right foot to make contact with the left foot, crown of the head towards the floor. Soften the knees and inhale, reach the hands all the way to the ceiling. And exhale, let's bring the hands towards the heart. And then release the hands down either side of your legs here. Crown of head towards the ceiling and just pausing into Dasana. So feet grounded towards the floor, chest open. Fingers reaching down towards the floor as well. 
And then we'll take it from here into Utkatasana. So on the inhalation, we're going to bend the knees and lift the hands to shoulder height initially. And then take the weight back into your heels so you can see your big toes. So you're sitting down, it's chair pose as well. Okay, so you're just staying like this. So if it feels okay to do so, start to lift the arms up beside the ears, extending through your little fingers, particularly chest broad, so squeezing the inner thighs to touch. And then from here, we'll take an inhalation to straighten the legs. And exhale, float again, the fingertips to touch the mat. This time, inhaling hands to shins, extend the crown of the head forward. And exhale, step your way back into downward facing dog. We'll inhale, lift the right foot away from the mat. And exhale that right foot to the right thumb, spinning the left heel towards the middle of the mat this time for warrior two. So right knee on top of right ankle. Reaching that left hand forward, take an inhalation and use that left arm to draw you back into warrior two, Virabhadrasana two. So in theory, right knee on top of right ankle, left heel turned out, chest turned to the left, shoulders down, face soft. Good, and then in theory, you also then turn your head so you're looking out over the middle finger on that right hand. So feeling the feet grounded to the mat, lifting through the crown of the head, chest open, right knee tracking towards the right little toe. Let's now take the left hand down the back of the left leg, turn the right hand palm towards the ceiling. Take an inhalation into reverse warrior. So that right knee still keeps tracking the right little toe. Make sure the neck is comfortable here. So you might just look ahead as I'm doing, or you could also look up towards that top thumb if that felt comfortable for you. So let's imagine the back of the body is against a wall, particularly the upper back. And we're going to take an inhalation now, straighten that right leg, reach the right waist over that right leg along your imaginary wall, and exhale the right hand down onto the right leg, left hand up towards the ceiling for Trikonasana. So the pose of joy, ground down into the ball of the right big toe, and draw the outer right hip back and the right sitting bone towards the left heel. Maybe the chin comes in towards the chest and then the chin rotates up towards the left armpit to look towards your left thumb. Just keep lengthening through your right side waist as much as you can. So we're taking the spine laterally here, but grounding the feet down. Okay, those of you who are looking up towards that top thumb, look down. And on an inhalation, come back into warrior two, so that front knee bends. And exhale, right forearm to right thigh, left hand up towards the ceiling. You could stay here, those of you who want to deepen your experience of this posture right now, possibly bringing the right fingertips to the inside of the right foot there. You might drop your left hand to the mat and then lift that left arm over the left ear so the fingertips reach to where the wall meets the ceiling ahead of you. And then from there, keep lengthening through your right waist, pressing into that left foot, turning your chest towards the left side of the room and chin towards that left armpit creating length through that side body, grounding the feet down so the legs are really active here. Okay, and then those of you who are looking towards the back of the room, look down towards the right foot. Let's take a deep inhalation, come all the way back up into warrior two, and then exhale the hands down either side of the right foot, release that left knee down onto the mat, left foot flat. Lunging now the right knee over that right foot, so check the right heel is flat to the mat, Stay here with the fingertips on the mat. Those of you wanting to go further, bring your hands onto that top thigh. Those of you wanting to go even further, hands down, thumbs turned out, and inhale, open into your chest as well. So in theory, the right knee is lunging forward and down, or the right thigh dropping down, but the left thigh lifting up as the tailbone lengthens down and the pubic bone lifts up. Okay, so keep pressing into the top of your left shin and your left foot, breathing. And then we'll take an inhalation from here and exhale the hands down onto the mat, tucking your back toes under now, inhaling, lift the left knee and exhaling downward facing dog. And while you're in downward facing dog, I'm just going to change my downward facing dog to the opposite way around so I can demonstrate more clearly as we move to the left side of the body. So from here, we're now going to take an inhalation to lift the left foot away from the mat and exhale the left foot to the left thumb. We're going to swivel the right heel to the middle of the mat, the right heel turn towards the back of the room. Keep your left knee on top of your left ankle, reach your right hand forward and take an inhalation to draw it back then to lift you torso perpendicular to the mat. So from here again, that left knee on top of the left ankle and tracking towards the left little toe, reaching through your back hand, drop 
the shoulders away from the ears. So there is this idea of having your stability in the pose, but also then like a sweetness, a softness as well. So the energy can flow. If we're too rigid, it won't be able to flow. So looking now, turning head to glance or eyes to glance over the middle finger on your left hand. And then we'll drop the right hand down the back of the right leg, turn the left palm to face the ceiling and take an inhalation into reverse warrior and continue your breath. Just checking that left knee is still tracking the left little toe there, pressing into the right foot. Try not to jam your right hand into the back of your right knee there. And then with this lovely length you're creating, we'll transition into Trikonasana, imagining the back of your body against a wall again. So on an inhalation, starting to straighten into that left leg, lengthening through your left waist. And exhaling, that's it, left hand down, right hand up towards the ceiling, shoulders down. Pose of joy, remember, chest open-hearted here. Left hand pressing to left shin and left shin to left hand. Left sitting bone directed towards the right heel, but make sure there's space through the pelvis, okay? So not jamming your lower back or down through your sacrum there. Chin towards that right armpit if that feels okay for your neck. And breathing, so both feet grounded down onto the earth, but at the same time feeling a lift and a lengthening through the spine. And then those of you who are looking up, now looking down towards your left foot, Take an inhalation, let's come back into warrior two, that front knee bends, and exhaling left forearm to left thigh, right hand towards the ceiling. And then stay here or left fingertip to the inside of the left ankle, right hand down towards the mat, and then inhaling right arm over the right ear, turning your chest towards the right side of the room and up towards the ceiling, using that left arm to prevent that left knee collapsing in and keep pressing into your right foot, lengthening through the sideways, your Tita Pars Vakanasa, so intense lengthening into that sideways, quite literally. Brilliant, so you can probably feel the heat building, the legs strengthening here. And then those of you looking back, look down, and with a deep in-breath, let's inhale all the way back up into warrior two. Well done, and then exhale, hands down either side of the left foot, swivel on the right ball of toes, bring the right knee down onto the mat. And we'll take a lunge position here, so make sure that left knee or I say make sure, make sure the left heel is down and the left knee is lunging over that left foot, fingertips on the mat, chest lifted, tailbone down, stay here, hands to that top thigh, or let's drop the hands down, thumbs turned out, and inhale, open into your chest. So keep pressing into the top of your right foot, right shin, drawing the left hip back, the right hip forward, opening through the heart space, keeping the breath nice and steady, so a lunge position here, maybe you can feel this, through the top of your right thigh, hopefully not through your lower back there. So keep the tailbone dropping down a little bit as the cubit bone lifts up. And then we'll all take an inhalation here and exhale from here into downward facing dog. And just enjoying the release in downward facing dog. And then we're going to take an inhalation to lift the head look forward. And as you exhale, walk, step or lightly jump your feet towards your hands. Take an inhalation, hands to the shins, extend the crown of the head forward, and exhale, folding forehead towards your shins. Softening through the knees here, and on an inhalation, let's reach the hands all the way up towards the sides of the mat, lifting hands to touch, and exhaling hands to the heart, releasing the hands down from there. Okay, so then we're going to take um, Padabhustasana. So we're going to have the feet about hip distance apart, big toes turned in, heels turned out, hands onto the hips, elbows in towards one another, ground the feet down, take an inhalation, open into your chest, and then on the exhalation, leading with the heart, folding from the hips. Those of you that find this aggravates the back, stop, bring your hands to your thighs, bend the knees, extend the crown of the head forward. Others of you, maybe keep your knees bent as you drop the head down, maybe hands to the shins therefore. Eventually, it's the index finger, middle finger, and the thumbs which grip onto the big toes. So you want the index finger, middle finger to slip between the thumbs, sorry, between the big toe and the second toe, with the fingertips pointing in towards the middle of the mat, and then the thumbs go there to meet the fingertips. We'll take an inhalation wherever we are, extend the crown of the head forward, and exhale, fold from here, elbows towards the sides of the mat, crown of head lengthening down towards the earth. So just encouraging this length through the back body. So crown of head towards the floor, thigh muscles active, so you're not jamming or locking into the knee joints. 
and just allow this lengthening. So noticing what's going on in the body. Notice what happens with the breath as we invert the head like this. Okay, and then we're going to take a breath in to lift the head and chest. And exhale the hands onto the hips. Soften into the knees now. Press the feet down, elbows in towards one another. And inhale, ah, come all the way up to stand. And exhale, release your hands from here. Just pausing, allowing that all to settle. So the feet grounded to the earth, crown of the head lifting to the ceiling. Deep breath in and deep breath out. And then let's keep the right foot grounded down onto the mat. Find a drishti, a focal point, something that's not moving ahead of you. So I guess not me. Lift your left heel away from the mat. And then let's take an inhalation and bring this left foot anywhere up the inside of the right leg, avoiding the knee joint. So maybe even rest the foot against the ankle here, hands to the heart. And use the, use the hands to encourage a lift through the chest, so as if your chest is trying to meet your thumbs. Those of you who have this left foot high up the inside of that right leg, press the right leg into the left foot and the left foot into the right leg. So Rick's asking the tree pose, nice and grounded here. Steadying the breath, focusing the eyes on a point ahead of you. Keeping the hip bones squaring ahead of you as well. And then releasing on an exhalation, hands apart, releasing the left foot down, grounding that left foot, ball a big toe, little toe, inner heel and outer heel. Find that drishti and let's inhale the right foot up into tree pose. So taking that right foot wherever it feels okay for you to take it, but just avoid the knee joint. And then hands to the heart and press or reach the chest open in towards the thumbs. Keep the eyes focused on that point ahead of you and the breath steady. Allow the movement in the pose. Good, and then releasing again on an exhalation. Right foot back down onto the earth. And then bring your feet together at the front of the mat if you're not already there, hands to the heart. And let's take an inhalation, reach the hands all the way up towards the ceiling. And exhale, let's swan dive, fingertips to make contact with the earth. Inhaling hands to the shins, extend the crown of the head forward. And exhaling downward facing dog. From there, here we're going to inhale the right foot away from the mat. And exhale into pigeon, so the right knee goes to the right side of your right wrist, if you can follow that. And the knee joint is at a 45 degree angle from the hip joint, from the right hip joint, okay? So it's going to go off that angle. And then you tuck your left toes under, lift the left knee and lengthen that left leg back with the toes then coming onto the mat. The right foot is dorsiflexed. Draw the right hip back, lift the chest as you drop the pelvis down, take an inhalation, pubic bone also lifting. And then exhale, bring yourself forward from here, getting down right low with the earth if you can. So maybe you stay on your forearms. Some of you can probably settle down forehead on the mat or on your hands. Okay, so it's a very impressive sounding pose, this one, pigeon pose. Ekapada Rajakopatasana. And an impressive pose it is as well because it can create quite some sensation in the body, particularly in that right buttock possibly. So I'd encourage you to soften the shoulders away from the ears, relax the jaw if you're gripping, and just be curious to see what comes up for you as you settle here. So sometimes the sensation is not pleasant at all and sometimes all we want to do is get out of it as quickly as we can. We have a tendency to run away when things get tough, then it certainly tends to show up in this posture. So just breathe into any sensation, whether that be in the body or actually some tension arising in the mind. And then we'll take an inhalation to lift the head and chest from here. And we'll exhale to walk the hands back towards the body. And then we might just pause here, or we might bend that left knee. Here it comes, I'm afraid. Maybe you keep your right hand flat to the mat and you reach your left hand back and then you gently take an inhalation and exhale. I say gently, but if there's anything gentle about this, draw the left foot in towards the left buttock, keeping the chest lifted, keeping the hips aligned as much as possible and trying not to bring more tension into the body in terms of gripping through the jaw or the face. 
So really do drop into the breath, deepen into the breath, deep breath in through the nose and releasing through the mouth. And then we'll release on an exhalation with some joy, I suspect we'll tuck the left toes under, we'll press the hands down, take an inhalation, start to unravel your way and exhaling, extending that right foot up into the air, just doing whatever you need to do through that right hip joint to feel a release from the pose. From pain comes pleasure and pleasure comes pain as they say. The balance of life as you then release that right foot back down onto the mat. And we'll do the same on the other side. So we'll inhale the left foot up and then we'll exhale, come into pigeon on the left side. So left knee on a 45 degree diagonal from that left hip approximately, working its way over there. Tucking the right toes under, lift the right knee, lengthen through that right leg, realigning through the pelvis, left hip back, right hip forward, take a breath in and breathe out, lengthen, leading with the heart. So getting down close and personal with the earth here. So you can feel yourself supported by the earth. So as long as you keep active through that left foot, it should take any pressure out of the knee joint. If however you find this pose is not ideal for the knee joint, then please do obviously come out of it. You can actually do this lying on your back as well. I might just demonstrate that for the benefit of those of you that find you can't do it lying as we just were. So you just come to lie on your back and just take that left foot onto that right thigh and press the left knee forward from there. You can do that obviously on the other side as well. Okay, so there is an option of doing a supine pigeon. And otherwise, those of you in the pigeon pose, again, just checking what comes up for you as you settle here. And then we'll move with the breath again. So we'll take an inhalation to lift the head and chest. And exhale, walk the hands back. And then we'll lengthen through that left leg before we bend the, sorry, through the right leg before we bend that right knee. We might stay there or we'll take the weight into that left hand, right hand towards that right foot, drawing that right foot in towards the right buttock, keeping the chest lifted as much as you can, face soft. So breathing into any discomfort that you might be feeling. It's quite a big muscle group there that we're working with. So you can sometimes feel the heat rising. Okay, and then we're going to release on an exhalation from there. And this time around, well actually, let's just drop the left buttock down towards the mat and spin that right leg around and spin the left foot around from there. Ooh, so we're now seated with the knees bent and the feet flat to the mat. So just have space behind you. We're going to take the hands out ahead of us, press the feet down, take a breath in and releasing on an exhalation, coming all the way down to lie on your back, aligning the heels underneath the knees, big toes turned in, arms down beside the body. It might be that you stay like this, otherwise cubic bones towards your belly button, press the feet down, take an inhalation and exhale, strengthening through the hamstrings here, lifting the lower back and then the upper back away from the mat, staying there, or hands together, lifting one shoulder up with the other shoulder, tucking the shoulder blades in towards one another, pressing down through the outer arms into the wrist joints there and really expanding into the heart space but more importantly pressing your feet down so press the feet down to strengthen through the backs of the legs here knees tracking over the ankles the knees not moving out towards the sides of the mat so set in bandhasana bridge pose brilliant and then releasing the hands apart and slowly on an exhalation unrolling your spine back down onto the mat and then from there, extending the left leg along the mat, if you've got a strap to hand or a scarf or something, take it around the sole of the right foot. Let's take an inhalation and exhale, extend that right heel towards the ceiling, so Supta Padakustasana. And then just finding a length through the back of the right leg. I'm not suffocating myself with my scarf. Pressing the left leg down onto the mat. So you could use a tie or anything like that, or maybe even a yoga belt, actually, it's probably more appropriate. So pressing down into the back of the left leg, hugging that right thigh muscle to the thigh bone. Just finding a length into the back of the right leg. This posture is particularly good to do actually if you, at the end of the day, especially if you're doing a lot of sitting or a lot of uh, sport, but also if you have trouble sleeping, it can really help to encourage sleep, believe it or not. You might stay here for a good five minutes, however. But for now, we're going to release. So we're going to press the lower back down onto the mat. We're going to press the lower ribs down. We're going to take the strap off. 
and then slowly on an exhalation, on the lower, she says, this right leg down onto the floor. There we go. And I suspect you'll find that your right leg now feels longer and lighter than your left leg. So we'll do the same to balance through that left leg. So we'll inhale the left knee in and take the strap or whatever you're using around the sole of the left foot and exhale, extend that left heel up towards the ceiling. Keeping that left leg straight and the right leg pressing down as well, so the right foot active. You might direct the outer left hip towards the front edge of the mat, those of you more practiced here. Keeping the back of the neck long. So again, there can be quite some sensation and we can be quite aware when we come into this, to the opposite side, so I mean, whichever way you started, that there is often a difference in how one leg feels compared to the other leg. So if you're curious like me, you might want to kind of figure out why that might be. Okay, so just breathing into any areas of tension or tightness. So you literally, it sounds a bit silly saying that sometimes, but you literally do just direct the breath there in your mind's eye. Okay, then we'll take the strap or whatever we're using away from that left leg, pressing the right leg down, press the lower ribs and the lower back down, and on an exhalation, let's lower now that left leg down onto the floor. So now I suspect both legs feeling as light and long as each other, and probably in need of a bit of a rest. So before we do that, we'll just take a final twist, so we'll inhale the knees in towards the chest, and then let's reach the arms out at shoulder height. We're going to take an inhalation and exhale, release the knees over towards the left side of the mat. You might just take something underneath or between the knees if you need to take any pressure off the lower back. It just aggravates the lower back, come out, of course. You might find your right shoulder lifts up, that's fine. We're going to anchor down through the legs, and then we might try and shift the chest towards the left a little and press that right shoulder down. If it's too strong with the right hand at shoulder height, just drop it down towards the front edge of your mat a little bit more. So always adjusting, maybe turning to rest the right ear on the mat, looking towards the right side of the room. And then moving with the breath, so engaging through your core as you inhale, lift it, your knees back to the centre, realign your spine. Hands at shoulder height, take a breath in, and then exhaling, knees over towards the right, propping as necessary, lifting the upper back away from the mat as necessary, moving your left hand as necessary, and maybe turning to rest your left ear on the mat. So again, just breathing into any sensation. And then let's again take an inhalation, let's lengthen. So we'll bring ourselves all the way back to the centre. And then from there come to rest in Shavasana. So shoulders down away from the ears, hands a couple of inches away from the sides of the body, feet hip distance, eyes closed. Let's take a deep breath in through the nose and out through the mouth. Just allow the body to settle onto the earth. So here you are, held by Mother Earth. And as you settle onto the earth, rooting down as we are, just imagine that you have a whole heap of little rootlets growing out the back of your body. So a whole heap of little rootlets growing out the back of your body, connecting you to the very centre of the earth. So here you are, resting and held by Mother Earth. And here you have a whole heap of little rootlets connecting you energetically as well to Mother Earth. certainly encourage you to continue resting here for a, a good five to ten minutes but for those of you that have to now finish your practice I'm just going to take an inhalation to draw the knees in towards the chest massaging the back and then rolling over to the side of the body and bringing yourself up from there sitting comfortably hands at the heart 
And namaste. Well done for completing your day one of the seven day challenge. Hope to see you tomorrow. Bye.